we've started R, we've changed the working directory in the console there, and we've loaded a script with some commands in. We're going to use these commands to look at some of the basic operations, mathematical operations that we can do within R. So first of all, we're just going to assign two values into two objects. So I'm going to run that line by line using Control R for Windows. So A is 5, B is 2. The basic operators work pretty much as we'd expect. So we can add, subtract, multiply and divide. There's two ways that we can raise to power. So if we want to do squares or cubes, for example, we can either use this notation where we have the little hat symbol between the two. So that's basically done five squared. Or we have this second uh, notation where you use a double multiplication sign which will give us the same answer. So at its most basic, R can function as a calculator. There's also some other operators that we can use. So for example, we can do a division, but just keep the remainder. Or we can do a division where we discard any uh, decimals or remainder and just keep the, the whole number. R can also work with logical values, um, values that work out as either true or false. The reason we might want to do these is that as our scripts become more complex, we may need them to do different things depending on certain values. For example, if the sample size is below a certain level, we may want to do one test. Otherwise, we might want to do a different test. And logical comparisons allow us to do that. So we can test for greater than or equal to. Or just greater than. Or we can test for exact values equal to. The thing to note here is that it's not a single equal sign, it's a double equal sign. Like many programming languages, um, a single equal sign is the same as a sign. It means store the value of. To test for equivalent values, you need the double equal sign. And the not equal is just an exclamation mark followed by an equals. The exclamation mark by itself is called the not operator. So for this example here, if it's not false, it must be true. The next four should all equate to false. So as we step through line by line, they'll come out as false. The first three, because we're using the values stored of A and B, five and two. And this last one, because we're now saying not true, which must be false. We can do more complex examples. So for example here, we're testing for two conditions at the same time. We have the AND sign, the ampersand between the two. So for this to be true, the whole thing, both of the conditions need to be true which in this case it is. The second one's going to fail because B is not 1. So that comes out as false. We can also do an OR comparison. For an OR comparison, any one of the conditions needs to be true for the whole thing to be true. So this first one fails because A is not 9 and B is not 1. The second one works because A is 5. It doesn't matter what B is because that part of it is true. And with an OR comparison, any one of them is true. The whole thing's true. 
This third one, A is equal to 7. No, it's not. B is equal to 2. Yes, it is. So we get a true out of the whole thing. And for the final one, both of them are true, but we still get a true out of the whole thing, because it doesn't matter. As long as one of them is true, the whole expression is true. So in summary, we've seen some of the um, basic calculations that we can do with R, some of the operators. We've seen how to raise numbers to a power. We've seen how to do integer division, where we just have the whole number. And we've seen how to do modulus division, where we just retain the remainder at the end. And we've seen how to do logical comparisons. So greater than, less than, exactly equal to, not equal to. And how to combine those tests into ands, where both, or, or possibly more, if there's more than two, where everything needs to be true for the entire expression to be true. Or an or expression, where at least one of the conditions need to be true.